So here's a shot of some of the stock as I brought it out of my truck. And what I'm trying to do here is just get some consistent widths of wood that I can laminate together to not only create the top of the table, but also the legs. So what I have here are 2x10 material, and when I trimmed it all down, I ended up with about 4.5 inches. Um, and so that's kind of what I started out working with, was 4.5 inch material. This is all southern yellow pine, and it's all wood that you can just get at the big box stores in the construction lumber section. So as you see, I'm pretty liberal with the glue here. What I'm gluing up right now are leg blanks, and I do use screws to help um, hold everything together while the glue dries. I make sure that I place the screws in locations where I know I won't be cutting with my saw later on. And that's very important because you do not want to accidentally find a screw while you're cutting. It's pretty hard on the, uh, the blades. As you see, I have a non-ideal situation here using my table saw as a assembly table. And I try to keep the tabletop clean between each glue up. It is difficult to keep it clean and as you can already see there's quite a bit of rust so this tabletop is due for some maintenance which I took care of in a later I took care of after this video but it shows up in a previous video in my playlist. As you can see in this next section I am laminating some pieces together that will form the tabletop. And the way I built this tabletop was in a sub-assembly manner. So what that means is I would laminate some pieces together to create sub-assemblies. And then I would joint and plane those sub-assemblies and then laminate the sub-assemblies together to create the whole tabletop. But this is just the first step right now. Um, I, each sub-assembly consisted of four pieces and so I had to glue all those together and again I'm using screws to help clamp these pieces together and I just made sure that the screw location was well below what would end up being the, the top surface of the table so nothing would end up uh, being ruined by a, an errant screw but also these screws are placed out of the way anywhere the saw would go or any drill bits or anything uh, that so they wouldn't interfere with the construction of the table itself. The old adage that you never have enough clamps definitely holds true as you're building a workbench. So this is a leg blank that I am now jointing two faces um, to make them flat and square to each other and I make sure to mark throughout which face has been jointed so when I take it to the next step here at the planer I know which side needs to be run through the planer and which side has already been run through the jointer. Now to prepare these legs I am squaring off one end of them And then I use that freshly squared edge to reference for the final length of these legs. And once again, I'm marking which leg ha is at, it has it. I'm marking the top and the bottom of each leg. And hopefully that'll become apparent here in a minute. Now you can see me struggle um, jointing these six foot long sub assemblies for the tabletop. They're heavy, awkward, and it's just a six inch jointer, so may, I may be pushing it to its limit here. And of course, I'm also dealing with a lot of uh, chip management. I don't have my dust collection set up yet, so I have to keep turning off the machine and clearing the chips so they don't clog up in this machine, which it is prone to do. Here's the least efficient dust collector setup that you'll ever see. Okay, once those sub-assemblies have been jointed on two faces, I do the same thing where I run them through the planer and make get everything parallel and square. 
and I end up with my final dimension for the tabletop. Actually, I don't yet because I'm going to glue these subassemblies together into larger subassemblies, I believe, and then plane those down to their final thickness. So this was another day. You can see the change of clothes, and it was a very physical type of work. The edges are just getting skip plane just to make uh, for better glue up. So I, I, when I cut out the pieces for the tabletop, I left those notches um, in some of these sub-assemblies, and that's where the tenon of the leg is going to fit into the tabletop. But here's all the stock for the tabletop, all planed and jointed and ready to be glued up. Before I do the glue up, I'm going to square off the ends of each sub-assembly just to save me from having to try to do that after the tabletop is assembled. It's a lot easier to do it now. It's a little bit more difficult to do it on these that have the that are pre-notched for the leg tenons and so I had to take a little bit off of each end and I'm doing a little math here to make sure I'm only taking off the right amount of each end to get to my final length. So now I'm taking two sub-assemblies and I'm gluing them to each other. I'm using some calls to just kind of help hold the ends together while I apply the clamps. These Harbor Freight clamps are really good for most general clamping and they even survived this this uh, project but I definitely could tell I was pushing them to their limits and I'm talking about the F-style clamps, the, the quick grip clamps that Harbor Freight sells. I broke several of those in the making of this. You can see me trying to protect my cast iron table, my table saw still after each glue up. I use a little wax to try to protect it. Here I'm cleaning up the little squeeze out that there is. Now I put a plastic bag over the tabletop, try to protect that cast iron table. And I'm, I'm putting a couple more sub-assemblies to back to together here. Same process. Glue, calls, and then clamps. I only place the clamps on the, t the top side of the tabletop because that's really the only side that I care about um, keeping the glue joints really tight. I will be jointing these pieces and so it won't matter if they're not completely um, square. So here's the, the last sub-assembly I ended up having to do three pieces. Uh, just because I had an odd number of sub-assemblies. Alright, once I jointed the two edges, I am now applying the, the two assembled sub-assembly assemblies <laughs> to make the, the final tabletop. I was really surprised at how well everything went together and there was a little bit of bowing that I was able to correct with the clamps but again these clamps really aren't designed for this uh, type of work and I was really pushing them to the limit but still I was satisfied and surprised and when I put these leg assemblies together I did not put glue in this section here where I knew I was cutting out the tenon so all I had to do is cut away the two pieces of material on either side of the leg to create the tenon. It really worked out well. In the meantime, uh, on the bottom parts of the legs where the stretchers are going to go, I had to notch out where the, the half lap joints where the stretchers were going to go. 
And I may have been able to plan that, but I figured it would be a little bit easier because I, first of all, I didn't know where they were going to go. And second of all, it would be hard just to glue it up. So I made this the more traditional way where I notched it out, chiseled it out, and then I used a rabbit plane to clean it out in order to fit the stretcher. So now I'm gluing the legs into the tabletop. It's fairly straightforward. I'm just using a square and some clamps to try to hold it in place while the glue sets up. Here's a little filler piece since the method that I used to create this table left a gap, I just glued in a filler piece to try to make the tabletop whole. Now that all four legs are glued into the table, I'm attaching the stretchers. These stretchers will help keep the table from racking back and forth as I'm working on it. And so I just glued some oversized pieces into the half laps and then I will cut them off later as you will see. So here I'm using a Japanese pull saw to just get a flush cut on those the excess and I did it also on the filler pieces that I put in for the leg mortises. And the rest of this is just finished work. So now I'm just sanding off the tenons, sanding down the top of the table a little bit. And then I'm using a hand plane just to smooth out the top. I'm not really trying to flatten it, it's pretty flat as it is. It does have a slight bow from uh, from front to back, but um, what I'm doing is just taking down the high spots. I had a lot of knot holes I had to deal with, and so. Um, I'm marking all the knot holes right now and then I'm using the blue tape just to tape off the knot holes on the edge so the, the uh, epoxy won't run out of them and then I'm using this epoxy to just fill in those holes just so nothing snags on the surface of the table as I'm working it. And here I'm just using a sharp chisel to shave off the excess epoxy, doing a little finished sanding on the surface to make it nice. At this point I was a little concerned about the uh, strength of that joint. Um, I'm not sure why. I mean it's, it's going to be a pretty strong joint, but the fact that I had to fill in that strip at the end kind of made me concerned. And so what I decided to do was add a couple of dowels into the joint just to make sure there was no way that that joint was going to break. And so I just used a spade bit to drill out the holes and I hammered, glued and hammered in some dowels. and reinforce that joint. So here's the finished product. I feel like it turned out pretty good. Um, it made a beautiful table, super heavy. After I delivered it, we applied several coats of Danish oil to protect it from the moist environment that it's going to be living in. 
but all in all I'm very satisfied with the the results of this project I'd like to thank you all for watching this video again if this is the second time watching it or watching it for the first time please subscribe to my channel to be notified of future projects thanks for coming by and I'll see you next time